All right, guess who just stopped by Knowledge Society headquarters, came to visit me? Gary V. What up, my man? What's up, man? What's up? You I ready? know you're a busy man. You ready for some fire? We're talking some Jets and Knicks and everything good. Virtual fire. reality, we're going to talk about Yarr. entrepreneurship. You probably know him if you're an entrepreneur. Got two of his books here we're gonna talk about and also a third one that comes out in just a few months here. I'm gonna do a little giveaway too for people who give the best comment. I'm gonna give 10 or 20 of his new books away. And uh, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks, brother. Yeah, he's headed to the airport, so he was nice enough to pop in here and make you know, sure make sure to show everybody my second half court shot that almost almost yeah. went in. <laughs> we Headed out the first piece of shit <laughs> shot I took. That will never be seen. But the second one that literally almost went in, make sure that gets seen. <laughs> that's got a shot. Oh! You ever seen his space balls where he's like, erase that, never show that again. Do you know about space balls? Do you know space balls sequel? Okay. Which never got made. Okay. Was called Space Balls 3. The Search for Two. <laughs> I still awesome. think that's the fucking that's coolest the title ever. ever. I'm devastated I didn't make it. That would have been a good one. No, man, thank you. So let's talk a little bit. Your new book. Yes, Ask Gary V. And let me just tell you guys, for those of you, few of you who don't know Gary, uh, Gary's a man of many accomplishments. He, I think, kind of popped on the scene at first with, he had Wine TV, which was a show. Took a company from basically zero to 60 million in sales, uh, selling wine by using content marketing, all the stuff that people are doing now. He was ahead of the curve. A lot of people have followed what, uh, Gary's lead. And that's a big company out of New York. How many employees do you have now? We have 600 employees, New York, LA, San Francisco, and London, and Chattanooga, Tennessee. Awesome. Tennessee. 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 Don't sleep. <laughs> Yeah, you don't know, sleep, you know what? Sleep our, on Nuga. You know one of our buddies who says, uh, who, "Who's uh, like, yeah, I'm always bringing Gary down here. I'm telling him this is the new internet. This is the Ted? new San Diego." Yeah, yeah Ted, he's Ted. such a great. He's guy. also a guy. I love Ted. Yeah. I just brought him up to New York for a big pitch for GE. Oh yeah. Vayner Media mainly works with you know Toyota, Pepsi. Right, big you know, brands. Big, big huge brands. brands. Yep. We do all the content marketing and the paid execution for social for them. So I brought Ted up for a big meeting with GE CMO. He was super pumped. It was a great great meeting, she's amazing, so it was a lot of fun. Awesome, yeah. CNB, CNB, actually he's gonna make it. CNBC's got a new show called Follow the Leader. Okay. Where they, follow, like basically what I do on my daily V vlog on YouTube. Yep. Um, and Ted's gonna be in the episode, because that's the main part of the whole episode, pitching GE, so. Super so. smart guy, sold a company for hundreds of millions of dollars, and now has become a, become a, yeah, text him, tell him. So let's talk real quick here, for those of you watching, one of the reasons, and we'll, we'll post the links how you can follow Gary on Snapchat and his YouTube video blog and other places, but, you know, Gary, if you had to sum up your core philosophy yeah. of life and entrepreneurship for somebody watching, yeah. how, how would you sum it up? I, I, think, I think the things that most win are self-awareness. I think one of the biggest mistakes, everybody, Meerkat, Facebook Live, Periscope, uh, that audience right now, everybody's watching the YouTube. I think the biggest mistake most of us make is we hope who we are instead of auditing who we are. Okay. Like everybody wants to be somebody. Like look, I really want to be the fucking quarterback of the New York Jets, but truth is, like I don't have it like that. Like I don't have those pieces and I think everybody believes that they can be an entrepreneur or a business person. And the yeah. truth is, there's a ton of kids right now who could be the number two or the number three or number four. The number six guy at Facebook made a fuckload of money. Yeah. And right now, that guy and that gal, because of the, all the entrepreneurship talk, is trying to start a company. Yes. And so we're living through a time where self-awareness is not being deployed enough because people are chasing a narrative. Mm -hmm. And so I'm pushing a lot of people to step back and, what are you good at? Like, you're gonna read more books this week than I'm gonna read in my life. <laughs> you're good at that, but, but it's the truth. You're good at that, I'm not. It's not how I consume information. So I think, look, I suck at 99% of stuff. I suck shit at 99% of stuff. What I figured out was I'm a salesman, I'm a storyteller, and probably the one little special thing I have, and it's my next philosophy, is I understand where consumers are gonna go, usually before other people. Mm -hmm. And so I've been yelling about Snapchat for three years, mm -hmm. and then I watch it. 
Right now I'm paying attention to musically. Will it go, will it not, I'm not sure. Yik yak a year ago, it didn't go. But Twitter did, and that's why I invested, and Tumblr did, and that's why I invested. And so the reason I started the YouTube show less than a year after YouTube came out was I believed in 2006 that that's where people's attention was gonna go. Right. Ty, when you got set up here, like this is 20 years ago, 15, 10 years right. ago. Yeah, you didn't Tons do any of money, of we didn't have all that, this fucking Amazon tripod, triple fucking screen, like th- this was, this cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. The distribution of all this cost millions of dollars. Right. We're living through the biggest technology shift and culture shift of our time. And so I think the, the principles are pretty pure. It's self-awareness. I think it's, it's work ethic. Yeah. I, I truly think that I outwork, I, I think a lot of people are as talented as I am. I think I outwork them. Mm-hmm. So it matters. Everybody who's watching who's gonna say, well Gary, what about working smart? Cool, me too. Now what, dick? Right, right? like I'm working smart and hard. Right, if you have so two now people what? working hard yeah, exactly. and so, smart, it's the person who works the and then I think yeah. And then I think being driven by something bigger. So for me, it's gratitude. I was born in the Soviet Union, I had nothing. I got lucky and that's what it's, you know, I know a lot of my friends who watch me work hard for 20 years hate when I say I'm lucky, but it's true. I was born in a communist country. During that little one window when I was a kid, America was able to make a deal with Russia and get some people out. I was part of that and I went from the place where entrepreneurship was the worst to a place where it's the best. Uh, I'm grateful for that and so that drives me as well. Yeah, yeah and I would say it's, it's there's a great book called The Self-Made Billionaire Effect. And one thing that when I listen to you talk, uh, one of the attributes of highly effective people is they can hold op- op- seemingly opposing ideas in their mind without getting confused. So for example, a seemingly confusing idea is it's luck and it's hard work. Some people will say, well, how can you say it's luck and hard work? Well, it, it's possible for two things to be operating at the same time. I'll tell you the thing that I'm thinking right now. Like while we're having this interview, I don't know how many of you have like separate streams in your brain. As I'm focused on listening and making sure I answer the questions and doing our thing, I'm thinking, okay, Ty and I haven't integrated a whole lot. There's a ton of fucking people watching me for the first time. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna be really funny because a certain, you know, I always love my first time to a new audience because there's people that love me and they hate me and it's based on two opposing views. One, I think I'm as egotistical as it gets. (laughs) I equally believe that I have more humility than anybody I've ever met. And I'm pushing so hard between ego and confidence and humility that when, depending on the series of questions that happen in this 20 minutes, 65% of this audience is gonna be like, that's my motherfucker, how do I follow Gary Vee? 35, I'm like, fuck that dude. And I'm always fascinated by that. And so when you bring up that opposing thing, I do think about luck and hard work. I do think I outworked everybody. I do recognize serendipity matters. First of all, you were born a human. Let's start with, like, we could have been fucking ladybugs. Like, you know how pumped I am that I'm a person? No, <laughs> seriously. Be the no, seriously. Are you happy you're not a ladybug? No, but, but wait a minute. I know everybody's laughing right now, but I want everybody to understand no, no, something. It's like, a good all point. of you laughing behind this camera, do you know the math around becoming a human? Like, your mom and dad have to have sex at the right hundredth of a second that all that fucking sperm, like, the math is insane. Yeah. So, first of all, I'm fucking pumped because I could have been a tree or a basketball or some horse shit like that. Number two. <laughs> Man, number basketball, two, <laughs> you're not born. I am sure of that. Like people, like I'm watching the stream right now and people are like complaining like, oh, like this sucks. And like I get fucking 10,000 email a week saying, you know, this didn't work out for me or my favorite. So Uber stole my idea. Fucking ideas. Like I don't even want to get on ideas. Like everybody, <laughs> like, like it's only execution, right? right? Everybody's, let me give you the 30 big ideas. Ready? The smart refrigerator. You want to build a trillion dollar business? You want to own 800 of these homes and 7,000 of those cars and four sports teams? Here it is. It's called the smart refrigerator. Everybody's going to have a refrigerator in their kitchen. That refrigerator is going to know when you're down to one Bud Light because you put in six. There's going to be one left and it's going to re order it for you. So yep. it's gonna out arbitrage every retailer, Amazon everybody, the fridge is gonna order it from Budweiser direct, Budweiser's gonna deliver it, and the fridge is gonna become this, Ty. Just like this has become the fucking machine and Apple makes a vig on everything, that's your fridge on every consumer product, the smart kitchen. Amaz- Amazon's dollars. already getting exactly. in that. Amazon's got that little because sensor you put Bezos up. Bezos is a beast. Yeah, so, Bezos is a monster. There you go everybody, there you go fucking Keith Mintz and Javier fucking and Linnaeus the King and Marcus J. Alford, there's your idea, right? (laughs) There's your idea, but here's the real fucking game. Who's gonna execute? Right. 
Who's gonna hire the right people? Who's gonna make the product? Who's gonna make the JVs with fucking the brands? Like, who's gonna execute? Ideas, fuck, man. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's talk. <laughs> it's, it's true that like, it's just true. What we have to do, I think what we, the problem in this interview is the energy's a little low. <laughs> so we need to bring it up a notch so that we, everybody <laughs> doesn't fall asleep on it. Uh, okay, let's move from, and I totally agree. Ideas are important, but you know, you know that you, there's actually broker lists you can buy of ideas for like two to five grand of, and t- they're, they're insanely good lists. Interesting. So anything you can buy for two to five grand is literally worth two to five grand. <laughs> but a company that you built that runs the smart refrigerator or personalized medicine is another big one. You can't buy these, they haven't been created, therefore, like Elon Musk said, I got, I've gotten to hang out, this is my third time with Elon Musk, and you know, one of my favorite Elon Musk quote, he says, you get paid in proportion to the difficulty of the problem you solve. So a lot of people are out there like, hey, I solved the problem, you know, how to walk to my refrigerator. Well, everybody knows how to do that. You have to solve a problem and therefore your income is gonna be directly proportional. Solve a small problem, know how to hand somebody a burger at McDonald's, they'll pay you minimum wage. Put someone on Mars in a rocket ship like Jeff Bezos Blue Origin or, or uh, you know, Elon Musk SpaceX, they're gonna pay you a lot of money. I would, I would add something to that for everybody listening at home, because that's right, and then everybody who's watching right now is thinking what I'm thinking, which is like, fuck, that sucks because I'm not talented enough to solve a big time problem. Because big time problems take real brain power. I will say the other thing, and I'm sure you're gonna agree with this watching from afar, there's also reverse engineering the demand of the marketplace, right? So for example, guys like pretty girls. Mm -hmm. Pretty girls are able to make a lot of money because they're pretty and there's demand. And so demand in marketplace behavior is very important. I think one of the ways to, if you don't think that you can figure out how to build a tunnel underground and get me from LA to New York in a minute, then the other thing to really take a step back, this is back to self-awareness. For everybody who's watching right now, if you're like, shit, that's great, but I'm not a fucking math genius like Elon Musk, the thing that you might be able to do, and I do think this is a talent, I think this is my talent, pay attention to what people care about Mm -hmm. and reverse engineer it. For example, Uber, what does Uber sell? Uber sells time. Right. Uber doesn't sell yeah. Uber doesn't sell transportation. Uber sells time. Everybody here, no matter their income level, cares about time because we now live in a 24/7 world. So, if you make that your religion of a market that matters, mm-hmm. building products and services that buy time and sell it back to people is probably, in my opinion, the quickest path to real financial success in the next decade for the average to above average operator and thinker because it's going to be such a big space. Yeah, totally agree. And and the thing about that, um, in terms of how much talent, you know, Warren Buffett says, if you have over 130 IQ, you can sell a lot of it. You don't need it. The average self-made millionaire is 125, 130 IQ, which is, Sharp, but not, so if you're watching this, if you're figuring out how to do Facebook Live and YouTube, you're probably already at that sharp enough level. What really differentiates you are some of the things you said, pattern recognition. Can you see patterns? Mark Cuban told me, he said, Ty, I've always been able to see around corners before other people. That's He recognized a pattern, can see around that corner. So that's an important thing. I say you gotta know the language of money. I talk a lot about that. You go to China, you don't have an interpreter, you're gonna be lost. In, in the game of making money, you need to understand what debentures are. And you know, people go, oh, that's a lot of syllables, debentures, you know? And I say, well, do you know Kim Kardashian? Because Kardashian, this is four syllables. And so we live in a society where people know big words. People are much sharper. sharper. IQs have gone up. It's a myth that we're getting dumber. Well, you know but we're not using it in IQ, the right way. IQ's been commoditized. Right. What do you want to know? Google. Who's the 19th president of all uh, the United States? This old fucker. Who knows? What's this? What, like, all information is here. To me, we're about to live through a generation of EQ that mm-hmm. is gonna be so disproportionately valuable because information has been commoditized to some level. Now, what's interesting about readers like yourself, contextualizing, yes. communicating it, yes. consuming it and regurgitating into new packages, yes. that is, that's the holy grail. You're gonna live on that. Other people are gonna live on that. To me, 
people need to bet on their strengths. They need to figure out what is the one, here's, you know what, let's make this practical. I know we have to wrap up soon. Forget about the promotion of the book, I wanna get this off. Find the five people that are closest to you in the world. Brother, sister, your homie that you grew up with. Spend a week, not five minutes, spend a week making them feel safe for the question you're about to ask them, which is, tell me what I'm good at and tell me what I'm bad at. Mm -hmm. The five closest people to you are not gonna wanna tell you the truth. Like people that really love you don't wanna tell you the truth, which is why nobody can scale self-awareness because nobody's gonna tell you to your fucking face, actually, I think you're a piece of shit. Right. Like your mom's not gonna say that, right? So spend a week or two weeks making those five people very safe and tell them, listen, this is what I want. I know that it might cause some friction for a week or two with us, but I'll get over it and then we'll be in a great place. Because if you're able to hear, and this is such an important part of being an entrepreneur, I think, and I'm curious to take your take, I'm a, I think I'm a great entrepreneur because I only see half glass full mm-hmm. and I'm only optimistic. Like I have, not, I have 37 fucking fires and headaches right now. Yet I'm looking at, oh, there's 19 new people that are gonna discover me, 900 new people, nine, that, like you gotta look at the upside. If you're capable of listening to the good and the bad, eliminating the good, mm-hmm. not like making it feel nice, but really focusing on the bad or really paying attention to the good. If you take five people and they all tell you that you're funny, Right. Fucking start making fucking Snapchat comedy videos. Like, like, let me, let me add please, to please. this real quick. One of the things that I tell people, I call it your Eulerian destiny, like how to figure out what you should do with your life. Uh, and Nietzsche, the philosopher, said the same thing you're saying. He said, you know, the mind is an impregnable fortress. And he said, you find out about yourself through friends. And he added one more that I always tell people enemies. What's your enemy? You know, I once had a guy that didn't like me, a business guy. We, we were gonna do a deal and it fell through for whatever reason and he said to me, this was his, he said, Ty, I don't like you, I don't like that dude, but he knows how to read. And so he gave me that. And because of that, I can rest assured, when your enemies are like, I'm gonna give you this, that's when you know that's some Ty, advantage I, you that's have. That's funny you said that. Have. And I'm gonna miss my flight and I don't give a fuck because I gotta say this. No, 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 we're, we're, no, don't we're worry. gonna, we're gonna Listen, make get you worry, on your flight. Worry. Matt, I hope you're not watching. We're, tur- we're sending Beverly Hills cops in front of you to just clear the way. The- no, because I have to be on stage in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, I'll make it though. I'll run. Uh, I read every one of my Amazon negative reviews. Yep. All of them. Three times. Yeah. I hate when people say people are trolls and doing all the, like anybody talking negative online. You know, my fans come in and they want to fight. I reread it four times. To me, understanding how people consume you and respecting the market needs to trump your own self. For me, the meritocracy of the end user is more important to me than my own self needs and that's how I reverse engineer. The way I've evolved in my career has been predicated, I'm thrilled for my haters and trolls because they give me context and have allowed me to understand that I was a contradiction. 10 years ago, when you say that comment, opposing views, it would have flew over my head. Now I've lived it, now I get it. Look, if the first time you ever saw me, I go on stage and I say, you all suck and I'm the best, you know, I get it. (laughs) All right, we're gonna put, we're wrapping up here in 60 seconds. Got one question for you. You live people get to see this, but this is only for people in the accelerator which is kind of my advancing. I want to put a little special thing, bonus from you. Okay. Bonus question for the accelerator for you, for you, Gary. Okay. Most cutting edge thing you're willing to share that an entrepreneur should know, a specific app that you see working. I'll give you a ton of shit because I love the practical part of it. There are several things. 